Welcome to our preview webinar of V2's 90-Day Challenge. I'm Kamala Devi, and I'm here with the founder, Sanjeev Sidhu. And we are so excited. We have so much to share with you. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Good. Look forward to sharing. Yeah, so we um, want to give you a real taste of what it's going to be like in the 90-Day Challenge. Uh, so we'll start off by you know, who we are and why Sanjeev created V2. Um, and a little bit about his big business success and how he took that and turned it into a personal growth program. And then um, the meat of the course today is to really hear about what stops us from personal change. So he's going to give us a, a deep dive into that. Afterwards, I'm going to paint a little picture about what it's like to do the 90-day course with us. And we're going to specifically talk about who should not do the course, because this isn't for everybody. Um, but if you stay all the way to the end, we're going to give you a personal growth tool that you could use right now. So we, we look forward to, uh, to sharing this with us, with you. I'd like to hear a little bit for you, from you about what it was like to create V2, like what really drove you to create a personal change program like this. So uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, I spent a lot of my life uh, helping large companies change, essentially become more efficient, and essentially react faster to circumstances. You know, uh, customers change, competitors change, etc. And earlier they used to say that the big fish ate the small fish. Today they say that the fast fish survives. So uh, a lot of my, uh, uh, me and my team, we spend time helping companies become faster, make decisions faster, react to uh, changes faster. Mm -hmm. Now one of the things we learned was that, and you probably uh, face this in personal life, always knowing what to do is easier than doing it. Right? For sure. Uh, knowing how to eat healthier is easier than actually doing it. Knowing how to exercise is actually easier than actually doing it. So for years, I looked at large companies and thought that change was a challenge. And one of the things I always thought about is large companies have a lot of people, and individuals have a hard time changing. Thus, groups of individuals should have a harder time changing. And we were actually quite successful making extremely large companies change and become nimble and more efficient. Mm -hmm. But as I start working with individuals, I feel that individual change is a little harder because we don't have a boss. Mm -hmm. We are our own boss, and we have years of uh, wiring, whether it comes from our evolutionary past, comes from our childhood. We have a set of beliefs and pre-programmed behaviors. Yeah. And especially when times get tough, we revert to the pre-programmed fast reactions. Yeah. We don't really know how to act. So part of V2 is to be able to help people act rather than react. Yeah. And I want to talk a little bit about what V2 is because um, as you know, I've, I've been a, a coach and in the personal growth movement for over a decade, and I've frankly never seen anything like it. Like a lot of personal growth programs depend largely on willpower and motivation. And what's tremendous about what Sanjeev brings to personal change is systems. Um, so when I started working with you and you started sharing with me, hey, there's a way to actually track our behaviors and our deep beliefs and there's systematic ways of not just reframing, but deeply rewiring. It was revolutionary. Um, so I'm curious how you got from you know, the, the big business success into personal growth. Like, What was that link for you? Very simply, um, I came to this country and uh, used to live on $500 a month. And uh, to cut a long story short, I had a lot of uh, luck, a lot of good fortune, worked with a lot of good people, and had tremendous success as defined by normal uh, standards. Yeah. And <laughs> Sanjeev is also very humble. He is uh, you know, very successful and humble about it. And it's, it's really exciting to see that V2 has made that you know, not, not that the V2 philosophy is something that's systematically able to be shared is what we're excited about. I appreciate that. Yeah. So one of the things that happened is moving from uh, 
living on $500 a month to affording anything I almost wanted or more than anything I wanted, I felt that the quality of my life didn't change. More importantly, my previous company, I2, I think we created several, I mean, probably more than 100 millionaires. And many of these people were close friends of mine, and I watched their lives. And I found that none of them was much more happier. The people who were unhappy remained unhappy. The people who were happy without anything remained happy, mm. right? Yeah. So circumstances really don't change how you show up in life. Mm -hmm. But many times we blame circumstances. What I found was that the richer people got, or the more successful they got, they just consumed more. Mm. They didn't necessarily become better people. Mm -hmm. And one of the questions then was, uh, to me in particular, as I talk to others, they always ask me a few questions. How do I be a successful entrepreneur? How do I become richer? How do I do what I really want to? And I want to help people in all those areas, but more importantly, I want to help people be happier, to thrive, to flourish, and to be empowered despite circumstances. So most people think there's a formula, and you do those things and you'll get a lot of success and you'll be happy. Mm -hmm. And what I want to teach and what I realized is that, uh, particularly having watched so much success, I realized that you know, if you uh, approach it the other way, which is you be empowered despite circumstances, mm -hmm. then you'll have much more power to do the right things. You do the right things and the right success will come to you and it's a virtuous cycle. Yep. And there is a vicious cycle where uh, you're disempowered by circumstances, things become harder and you go down a different spiral. So I wanna help people go down the vicious, not the vicious, the, the virtuous. The upward cycle. The upward cycle. <laughs> But, yeah. and I think in this cycle, people will be happier, will thrive, will flourish, will be empowered, yeah. but will also need less. We won't need the bigger car. We won't need the bigger house. Yeah. And we'll be kinder to the environment and the planet. It's so profound and timely and needed. And it, this is why I'm so excited about sharing this program with the world. You know, we're really at the early stages of beta testing the methodology. And the reason that um, I'm so invested in it is because I've seen personally um, that even in, in my travels through the world and seeking gurus and self-help and different teachers that we can have these profound awakenings, but they're not sustainable if we're still dependent on the circumstances. And I feel like this is, this is a key to building the internal muscles and the wiring so that there's, you know, it's like a, access to, to you know, true sustainable satisfaction. So I want to hear more about how, how we can do this. So I'm looking forward to your talk on what stops us from peak potential. Right. Hi, so it's my privilege to discuss a topic that I'm seriously and very, very passionate about, which is how to stay really super empowered despite circumstances. Saying empowered is easy as if everything's going well, right? And most of us, when things go well, we're happy, we're thriving, we're flourishing. And when we perceive things not to be going well, we go down with the circumstances. The question is, is it easy? Is it teachable? Can we rewire ourselves to stay empowered despite circumstances? My belief is yes, a lot of people believe yes, and today I want to share with you some of the teachings. Particularly, I want to teach you about five muscles that I think anyone can build, and five muscles that will allow you to ride more smoothly through life, or more importantly, fly through life, especially fly over those bumpy, bumpy ditches that once in a while bring you down, once in a while keep you from performing at your peak. You know, we all have times where we feel that we're not living life totally in line with our intentions, right? Happens to me, probably happens to you. And I ask my friends all the time, what is it that's keeping you from living life totally in line with your intentions? I ask myself that often. Answers are typical. Uh, people talk about time, people talk about money, health issues, 
people all often blame others. I'm not able to perform at my peak because of ditches that others are creating in my way and ditches that I'm creating myself. My beliefs, I'm not good enough, I don't have enough willpower, you know what I'm talking about. So we'll talk about how to then ride through life, be empowered and thrive despite the ditches, despite the circumstances. So to do that, let me introduce you to the story of Tom and Mary, two people who are riding along and fall into a ditch and uh, circumstances get really bad. So what I'm going to use is a ditch to use any circumstance that people go through, right? Somebody you trusted let you down, you lost your job, you got into a financial mess, your health became bad. The issue is how do we deal with circumstances like that? Or what is human nature? And I particularly want to talk about two forms of nature. One is our pre-programmed behavior, what we do every time, things that keep us from living life totally in line with our intentions, versus a more evolved response, a response where we are not reacting, but we can act consciously and live life along the lines of our intentions, okay? So with that, let's see what happens to uh, Tom. Uh, again, assume it's a very big ditch, it's 14 foot and you fall right into that ditch. So we're gonna talk about what he feels in terms of desires, emotions, and behaviors, and what leads to those desires, emotions, behaviors, and what leads to a pre-programmed ripple. A circumstance happens, you fall into a ditch, and boom, there's a response. And the response really is most visible from your behavior, right? And the bigger the threat, the more you scramble, the more frantic you get in terms of behavior. Your emotions usually become pretty unhelpful. They were there for a reason. Nature or evolution provided these uh, uh, emotions to us to be able to react correctly to a circumstance but many times we don't correct it, correctly uh, connect a response to a situation. So a situation that requires us to be really calm, centered, we may get angry, we may get jealous, we may get fearful, right? So in this case, Tom has a physiology where his heart is pumping fast. He's in what we would call a paras, no, sorry, a sympathetic nervous response. While what he needs is something else. And secondly, He's really very anxious, and his emotion is one of fear. Let's go then and look at his desires. By the way, when I'm talking about these things, desires, emotions, and behaviors, I'm gonna talk about them again and again because that's key to our program response. Uh, so his desire here is to be able to get out of the ditch instantaneously. It's not fun to be in the ditch. It's pretty uncomfortable to be in the ditch. More importantly, it's really scary to be in the ditch, right? So uh, opportunity for him is to say that, you know, one can ditch, live 10 days in a ditch. I should be calm, I should be very strategic about it. Instead of that, his urge to be out of there instantaneously forces an emotion of fear and forces a behavior of being really frantic. So this is a typical human response. This is what we call a version one response. This is what we are programmed to do because when we fall into a ditch, for example, losing our job, our response needs to be different than the response that was given to us, which was fine-tuned for running away from a tiger that was attacking us or a snake, correct? And the question is, can this be reprogrammed? Yes, it can. And one of the things we need to do to be able to reprogram it, and not necessarily the only way, but a neat way is to get to the underlying beliefs. So take a look at Tom. His underlying belief could be that bad things always happen to me. And I'm not qualified or not capable to be able to get out of this ditch. Now that's an unhelpful belief. And again, it's our view that first you need to become aware of it. And if you become aware of it, you can reprogram it. So with that, really quickly, let's look at what the response Mary has. And Mary is different than Tom. She's been through version two training and uh, she knows how to be empowered despite circumstances. So let's look at her behaviors, her emotions and desires, but let's start by looking at her belief. As I told you, she falls into the ditch and gets frantic like everyone else, but garners some of the muscles that we're going to teach you about later. And as she garners and pulls those muscles in, she calms down and says, 
you know what? I'd love to get out of this in one second or 15 minutes, but that may or may not be feasible. But I have up to 10 days. People can survive 10 days in a ditch like this. So why not I be strategic? Then she looks at what her desire ought to be. She says, instead of uh, attachment to survival, an attachment to getting out of here, why not I think about it differently? Why not I accept the circumstance as it is and say, my job is to do my best. And my job is to grow from this experience. Would it not be so much easier to deal with a ditch, with a bad circumstance, if we say, this circumstance is a gift? I know as hard as it can be really hard if you have difficult circumstance, but if you take a situation which says, I'm going to deal with it as a gift, and I'm going to deal with it as a growth opportunity. So that's what Mary does. The resulting emotion then is not a fear, but is a balance. She's calm physiologically and is now empowered to do what needs to be done. What needs to be done is deliberate action. Maybe she's in a ditch and she's going to dig mud and create steps. Three steps on the first day, three steps on the second day. On the third day, she walks out on the steps, right? And she gets flow. She's not stuck and the work happens easily, and she has a planned, clear situation out of the ditch. Remember what happened. She was not empowered because she got out of the ditch. She first became empowered. The power gave her the ability to fly out of the ditch. That's the concept of being empowered despite circumstance. Powerful concept, you can learn it. So that's what we call as V2 behavior while V1 is, version one is what we were programmed environmentally or evolutionary wise, where we say we're always addicted to circumstance and hoping that a new circumstance will make our life better. Okay? A quick summary of then version one behavior and version two behavior. Again, we always look at four aspects. We'll start from what the underlying beliefs were. Beliefs create desires, so there's a ditch, and both Tom and Mary had different beliefs. And uh, Tom's belief was a disempowering belief that I am not capable of doing anything about it. That led to a desire to be able to uh, get out of the ditch really fast. And the desire had two important qualities. It was uncontrollable, and it was very critical. Mary, on the other hand, looked at the circumstance. It was dire. But she said, it is what it is. I accept that all is well. She did not have a crisis mentality. Thus, instead of being in an unhelpful emotion place, which is fear, jealousy, anger, she was balanced. Her physiology was more balanced. And her behaviors were more deliberate and flowing. Can this be taught? Yes. As I said when I introduced Mary's case in the ditch, I said Mary got empowered first. And that allowed her to shift her responses from what could have been very much like Tom's. Like, it's natural that her emotions were uh, unhelpful. It's natural that her heart was beating fast. It's natural that she was scrambling. But once she became aware of that, she shifted. She used certain muscles that she had built. And next, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what these muscles are. So we've classified the muscles as five, and we call them the A, B, C, D, and E of empowerment. I'm going to take you quickly through these things that are easy to remember. Hopefully, you'll remember the A, B, C, D, E. I'm going to give you a very brief and fast tour. And as you know, we have more detailed training where we spend weeks helping you understand, helping you exercise, and helping you build these muscles. So let's go to A. And A, guess what A stands for? I've talked about it a lot. It's the awareness. Awareness is, I think, 50% of the contribution or more to empowerment despite circumstance. And if all you focus on aware is awareness, I think you're a long way in this journey. Uh, many exercises build awareness, meditation exercises, uh, many traditional uh, ancient traditions teach about awareness. The Buddha is taught about awareness. We are adding a little bit to what's out there, but all the techniques out there are extremely useful. Our emphasis is going back to what I talked about uh, is when I described human behavior, I talked about how beliefs connect to 
uh, desires connect to emotions, connect to behavior. So that's what you want to be aware of. When the circumstances change, you want to look at what the circumstances are. And whenever we look at circumstances, we form a judgment about the circumstances. We classify the circumstances as nasty, bad, really good, etc. And whether we classify a circumstance as bad or we classify it as really good, uh, it sets in a desire. A bad circumstance we want to get out of. A good circumstance we want to hold on to. Both causes an attachment. Attachment causes desires. And attached desires make us have an emotion. The emotion could be, I'm in a ditch. I'm never going to get out of it. Or the emotion could be, I'm not in a ditch. Things are good. I'm in love, and I'm attached to what I'm in love with, but I don't want to lose it. Thus, I have fear. Right? Unhelpful emotion for both these things. And then that results in behavior. And we saw Tom's behavior, and we saw Mary's behavior. Uh, the behavior was mitigated by the desire, mitigated by the emotion. And so when we talk about awareness, we're teaching people to be aware of their behaviors, particularly their unintentional behavior. And unintentional behavior will have possibly an emotion attached to it, possibly a desire that's driving it. So my desire uh, long term is to eat healthy, but I'm eating the chocolate cake. So what's the other desire? the hidden desire, the unconscious desire that's driving me to eat the chocolate cake. There's probably a belief system underneath that that's saying that life is too short and all my other friends are eating chocolate cake, thus chocolate cake is good. Okay, So that's a brief and fast uh, overview of what awareness is. And again, awareness is watching yourself reacting to circumstances. And as you watch yourself reacting to circumstances, you'll be able to then balance yourself. Balance yourself to have action to respond intentionally as compared to react and act programmatically. Okay? So that's the first muscle. Second muscle is B. And guess what B is? Again, I introduced the idea. I talked about balance. All right? What are you trying to balance? When you're in a ditch, chances are your physiology is not helpful. Your heart is beating too fast. You're getting too tired too fast. You're prob probably breathing too shallow. right? Your emotions might need to be balanced. What you need is courage, and what you're feeling is fear. What you need is optimism, and what you're probably feeling is uh, sadness. What you probably need is love. What you probably need is empathy for other people. And what you're feeling is selfish. Can you change that? Yes. And that's what we teach under balancing. And sometimes you want to balance your desires. Like Tom, if he has a desire to get out of the ditch instantaneously, then it's very hard for him to be empowered. Because that's going to lead to fear, and that's going to lead to despair, and that's going to lead to frustration. But he shifted, and he said, you know, my desire is to learn from the experience. What's going to happen is going to happen. My desire is just to do my best. So these are shifting techniques. It starts with awareness, and then you see what's most disabling you, what's most disempowering you. You could start with your physiology. Great physiological experiment would then be, uh, so uh, we can look at this slide. So if physiology is what you want to change, you and you're feeling angry, you can put up a smile, you can jump up and down. And all these things tell your body, particularly your unconscious part, that things are OK. Things are not as bad as they seem. They shift your judgment. right? So once you shift your physiology, you'll get temporary benefit. And that temporary benefit is useful. It's like giving you a few extra breaths. It's giving you a few extra grounding to now go and look at things a little deeper. An example is you could look at your emotion. There's various ways of shifting emotions. Say you have fear. A typical thing for people to do is say, don't be scared. That doesn't help. Many people call it the second dart, because the action of not being scared is constantly looking at your fear more and more and asking yourself, are you fearful? And that builds your fear, and you get upset on the fact that you're still fearful. 
So you're upset at the circumstance, and you're upset at the fact that you're fearful. Right? So what we teach is that instead of fighting an emotion, instead of fighting darkness, you figure out where to light a candle. A lighting a candle in terms of fear would be lighting the candle of courage. The moment you light the candle of courage, then it gives you the ability to take the three extra steps, take the three extra actions that are necessary to move you from being disempowered to empowered. So we teach several emotion shifting techniques. And one of the most powerful emotion sh shifting techniques is looking at the beliefs that are causing that emotion and looking at particularly the unhelpful beliefs and reframing them. Uh, more on that later, particularly as you would uh, travel the V2 journey with us and take some of the exercises, participate in the community where you'll learn more about that. Very quickly again, if I still have your attention, a little bit about desires. Uh, balancing desires is really important. You ask yourself two questions. This is a desire I have. Is it something that I'm totally attached to? How would you know? You would ask yourself a question that, if this desire is not met, will I be extremely upset? The moment you let that go, you'll feel more empowered, and your ability to meet that desire will be greater. Again, desire shifting happens at many levels. At the deepest level, your chances are that you have some beliefs about the desire that need to be shifted and reframed, and we take you through some of those techniques. The next muscle, then, is clarity, C for clarity. And clarity, a lot has been discussed about clarity in previous uh, uh, personal growth uh, workshops, etc. I'm going to cover it really fast. It's knowing your purpose, knowing your intentions that you need to carry out to be able to meet that purpose, but more importantly, figuring out the plays, the deliberate actions that you need to take to be able to fulfill that uh, intention. And that's the D. It stands for deliberate actions. This is where we make a lot of contribution. Our view, again, is we keep going back to the two minds, the unconscious mind, the conscious mind, the more limbic brain, and the more logical brain. And we make a lot of intentions using our logic, but it's not our logic or our uh, uh, conscious brain that implements it. The idea is to make those things that are your intentions, that are currently in your conscious brain, part of your unconscious programming. How do you do that? By practicing. You cannot learn dancing by reading a book on dancing, right? You've got to practice the dancing. And that's where deliberate action comes in. In fact, all of what I talked to you about, all the exercises, finally need to put into a deliberate action. And we have a methodology for doing this. And the methodology is called playbooks. We copy from sports teams where, you know, when you fall in a ditch, it's tough to do what you consciously want to do because your natural action is to act fast and to act unconsciously and act based on previous programs. A playbook gives you a new script, and so when you fall into a ditch, you don't have to think. You just go to your script. And we teach you how to create the scripts. We teach you how to create the playbooks. The last and very important muscle is empathy. If you work on the four muscles, the A, B, C, D, the awareness, the balance, the deliberate action, the clarity, chances are you're more empowered. You're more empowered, chances are you're more empathetic to yourself. And you have a chance, just like you're able to see yourself better, you're able to see others better. And history shows that the most empowered people are not me-focused, they're we-focused. When you focus on something more than yourself, chances are that you're more empowered. When you're more empowered, you're more able to focus on things other than yourself. That's the magic of creating a version two of yourself. So uh, those are the five muscles. I talked to you about what happens to humans when they fall into ditches. I talked about how you have a choice to act rather than react. I'm really passionate about it, and I hope you are too. Hope you're motivated to join our community, our community of people who want to learn how to thrive, how to be empowered despite circumstance, a community who wants to be unstoppable. And hope you help us create a movement, a movement of a million game changers, 
a million people who want to become better and want to create a better planet. Thank you so much. That is so touching for me, Sanjeev. These teachings have really literally like, like opened my mind and changed my life. Mm -hmm. And particularly, you know, I've done a lot of reframing through different methodologies. And um, what's different about the ABCD paradigm is it becomes a, a, you know, like a process that I do so frequently that in the moment of crisis, I can, I can kind of represence myself and be like, oh, all of a sudden I got instant access to empowerment, which before is sort of like a concept and there was a gap between how I was really feeling and how I'm really um, acting. And so I'm grateful for your making the methodology so simple. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanna, I, I'm honored to be able to offer this methodology to 100 beta testers. This is a really exciting opportunity and I wanna paint a picture of what that's gonna be like. Um, so we've got nine, you know, teleseminars, or excuse me, webinars in which uh, we teach one week for each of these, um, of these concepts, each of these muscles. And the second week, we go into awareness in great depth. Um, what's powerful is, is not just the concepts, but that Sanjeev actually designed a software to help us uh, track and rate um, our own empowerment. And so I'm gonna show you just a few little screenshots from this um, software. And it's, it's kind of vulnerable because they're, you know, my personal awareness about my own personal uh, behaviors, um, emotions, and desires. But I want to give you a test for, or a sample for those of you who are beta testing this program, you're actually going to get to um, track your own behaviors, emotions, desires, and then a word cloud will be made of, of some of your most frequently empowering and disempowering BED. Um, what it's like is it's almost like lifting the hood up and looking at how you're wired, looking at what's underneath. And I'll tell you, when I first started doing this with you, Sanjeev, I think I was just two weeks into tracking and, and I would have guessed my biggest emotion was, was gratitude. And it was like, no, actually, I'm really frustrated. <laughs> and with some coaching from Sanjeev, he said, you know, frustration happens when you feel like there's something you can't change. And he, he started showing me that wow, I'm really feeling disempowered in my life. And within another two weeks of tracking and doing this work, my frustration turned into fascination. And then it turned into a lot more of the gratitude and, and ecstasy. So this is the most empowering tool. That's the meat of the course. You'll be doing your own um, empowerment rating and self-inquiry. And in week three, we do balancing beyond beliefs, and he has all kinds of multi-dimensional shape-shifting techniques. Week four, we go into you know clarity, and week five, we'll go into um, deliberate action. So you see the trend. It's a week for each of the A, B, C, D, and then we get to do some experiments, some V2 experiments like, um, choosing these mood multipliers. Uh, the last two weeks, we'll be doing the uh, V2 living experiments where we'll give you exercises and tools to test out these practices in your life. And the beauty of doing the nine-week program is that you will, um, by the end of it, have a V2 birthday. That's where you, you get to see if you've cultivated the habits to be a whole new version of yourself. And we invite you um, to do this course at no charge. This is a really extraordinary, valuable opportunity. And it's really from Sanjeev's generosity. He's like, I want to make a better world and I want to offer this. It's like a give back. So what you get if you do sign up for this is the paradigm shifting webinars and you get dozens of practical you know, personal growth practices and tools. And then you also get the support of a group. Exactly. That's my favorite part, is the V2 community. Mm -hmm. Just being in high level conscious 
you know, group synergy. So we hope that you'll get an application, you know, and send it in. We've already been overwhelmed with the response. You know, we've gotten responses from 11 countries. And we want to, you know, get you to get involved um, right away. So we're going to add the link onto this uh, webinar. Let's talk a little bit, though, because we said this isn't for everyone, who's, who should not do V2, Sanjeev? Right. So uh, we talked about being in a ditch and how uh, being empowered allows you to get out of the ditch. But if the ditch is really deep and sometimes you don't need, uh, what you need is someone giving you a hand. So I think uh, I'm asking people to look at themselves, use their intuition. Uh, many people do need one-on-one -on -one professional help. This is no substitute for one-on-one -on -one professional help. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's uh, I think, number one. Second is transformation isn't easy. Mm -hmm. You need to be in a place to be able to receive the training, but more importantly, do the exercises, mm -hmm. right? If your house is on fire and you are going to need help with putting out the fire and you need two or three people helping you put out the fire, you need professional help, you need experts working with you one on one. Mm -hmm. And if that's your situation where your house is on fire, this is probably not for you. Mm -hmm. This is for you if you're pressured and you want to learn techniques that when your house is on fire, uh, you have uh, all these techniques under your belt and you can use them. Yeah, so we and have to be in a stable situation in order to do the deep work. Exactly. Yeah, good. Exactly. I think that's that's a primary requirement. Anything else comes time. to your mind? I think, you know, w we are in such a time poverty in this, you know, yeah. culture, and so you have to be willing to invest in yourself. And right. that's like, I mean, we kind, of, we kind of looked at it and we said, well, you've got an hour webinar. We want you to be doing half hour of of introspection each day and we want deep homework and of course the time it takes to actually implement the change so we're figuring like 10 hours a week we'd like to see you really invest in in creating a new version of yourself right and one thing I want to say is that you know change comes in uh, stages sometimes it's like an avalanche you keep putting snow on the mountain and just a little bit of snow can create a whole avalanche so at times you'll be putting work and you feel you're getting nothing out of it. And then you'll get breakthroughs. And some of you will have a breakthrough in the first class, second class, first week, second week. Others might need to keep doing the work before you get the breakthrough. Mm -hmm. So the main thing is, are you ready to do the work? Yeah. And I think the results will be there. It's something that I use on a daily basis. I benefit from uh, both the software and the methodology. And I feel pretty strongly about it if you meet the criteria we talked about. Oh, and the other piece, because the software's in a uh, beta stage, it's exactly. really a prototype. If you're the kind of person that needs things to be perfect without glitches and you get really frustrated with technology, this is probably not for you. We're looking for people who are early adopters, willing to give us good feedback so that we can make it a really great software to serve you. Yeah, that's what this is. It's a, a joint travel on a journey together. I think we have a lot of really interesting things to share, but we are hoping that you bring something to the rest of the community. It's a community uh, exercise in being empowered despite uh, circumstances. And uh, we're looking for you to benefit a lot from it and also bring something to the community, help us debug, debug the methodology, yeah. debug the software. And we're going to have a lot of fun along the way. Great. <laughs> Thank you. So um, we promised that if you stayed till the end of the video, we would offer you a little tool that you could take home. Um, so Sanjeev is going to teach us what we call BED introspection. Good, good. Uh, so it's a very simple tool, and uh, it's uh, one that I find pretty powerful. So just a little background. Uh, it's an awareness tool, right? And uh, awareness is 50% of your path to being empowered despite circumstance. And there are many good uh, awareness tools out there, techniques from the ancient traditions, uh, new mindfulness techniques coming uh, from positive psychology. And all the techniques are good. We use many techniques for different people. And I'll teach you a very simple technique. Great. Okay. And it's best done once a day, mm -hmm. probably at the end of the day, where you reflect back on 
uh, your day. And a good analogy to have in your mind is you're a sports star or a dancer, mm -hmm. and you're doing a post-game video. You're looking at yourself in action and saying, what drove me? Did I act? Did I react? And what drove me to do that? Such that next day you're more aware of it. So mm -hmm. we'll try to create a post-game video of yourself. And first important thing is when you start the exercise, take 10 minutes mm -hmm. or five minutes. Mm -hmm. And most important thing you do is you say, for the next 10 minutes, there's nothing more important in my life than to do this. Everything else can wait. Mm -hmm. Because everything can really wait. And, right? Yeah. yeah, and sometimes I do it in two minutes, and it works. <laughs> it does, it does. But commit to a time, two minutes, five minutes, yeah. etc., and then get centered. Mm -hmm. You want to get centered yes. now? Maybe take two deep breaths. <sighs> Great. Getting centered is important, and uh, some of you might require a greater amount of time getting centered. If you have five minutes, take five minutes getting centered, and a great uh, anchor to get centered, the greatest anchor in my view and many others, is your breath. <sighs> Just focus on your breath. So anchoring doesn't mean telling yourself, I will not think of X, Y, and Z. You know it's not effective. You cannot not think of the white bear if I ask you not to think of the white bear. <laughs> so but what you can do is say, I'll focus on my breath. And one t uh, quick trick there is focus at the top. Focus at the bottom, those are the tighter anchors. Mm -hmm. So notice the gap as you shift from your in breath to your out breath and out breath to your in breath. And now we're going to introspect on three or four key issues. You know, mm -hmm. think of an unintentional action or an intentional action. Make up one. So the intentional action for me is um, is when I when I'm journaling like okay. that. That's really a conscious practice. And talk about unintentional action. Uh, unintentional is watching Netflix. <laughs> okay. So that's what you do. First thing is quickly write down or mentally think of your intentional actions and your unintentional actions. Mm -hmm. Next is emotions. A helpful emotion and an unhelpful emotion. Yeah, so I'm reflecting on my day, and of course the most helpful is gratitude. Mm -hmm. um, and as I mentioned, I get frustrated sometimes, and that's disempowering. Great, great. So frustrated is your unintentional, and gratitude is your intentional. Mm -hmm. Great. And desires. Mm. Uh, when I want, I want control, you know, like I, w I want it all to go my way, that's, that's unintentional. Right. A and the, um, the desire for grace, for just, just ease and the f that feeling that all is well is the uh, intentional desire. Great. So that's the exercise is as simple as that. You think about your uh, actions or behaviors, you mm -hmm. think about your emotions, and you think about your desires. Yeah. If you want to get more sophisticated, you'll find a connection. So you look at your action, which was Netflix. Mm -hmm. Then you say, what was the emotion associated with it? Was I doing it more when I was frustrated? Mm -hmm. Was it trying to fulfill a need? So you come to a desire. Right. May what was the desire underneath that? Maybe the desire was relaxation. Maybe the desire was lack of pleasure otherwise in your life. Not in yours, but... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, First thing is, look at the behaviors, emotions, desires, mm -hmm. then try to find a connection between them, and you'll see usually a connection. Mm -hmm. The connection is that there's a desire, it leads to an emotion, it leads to a behavior. Yeah. This, is, this is brilliant, it's so simple, but it, w after doing it for, like I said, two minutes, I get more present, and then I feel like I'm ready to, you know, to be intentional with my next action. Right. So thank you for this practice. Yeah, so it's your introspection meditation. It's a directed journal. It's like journaling, but it's asking three more questions and forming the connections. It'll teach you how you react to the world, how you react to circumstances, allowing you to choose better uh, tomorrow. Yeah, so we hope that you take this practice, and if you're a meditator, do it internally. If you're not, then go ahead and journal out what's your BED, and that's the, the takeaway gift that we want to give you for being with us to, to, on today's preview call. Um, and our hope 
you know, going forward is, is that you are inspired by Sanjeev's teachings and his invitation and that you choose to be more aware and more empowered. Here's to you thriving despite circumstances, no matter what. Thank you. Yeah.